many leftists misunderstand opportunism and revisionism to be some offensive labels that have no real basis whatsoever. But in Marxist theory, these are strictly determined scientific concepts. The phenomena they categorize represent a crucial problem in the communist movement to this day. Opportunism is a theory and practice in the labor movement that contradicts the real interests of the working class and pushes it on a path beneficial to the bourgeoisie. Through compromises or open surrender, opportunism ultimately subordinates the labor movement to the interests of the capitalists, corrupting it and leading to its defeat. Emerging within the revolutionary movement of the proletariat, opportunism is a reflection of non-proletarian tendencies in the working class. Opportunism characterizes a set of ideas, tactics, trends, and practical solutions in the left movement that are harmless to capitalism and even beneficial to maintaining it. The ideas and practice of opportunism particularly include theories for cooperation between classes about building socialism without revolutions through reforms and improvements within the capitalist system. Opportunists tend to mislead the workers regarding the actions of the bourgeois government which results in compromise and support for military campaigns. Opportunism also includes an extreme degree of ostentatious revolutionism and the everything here and now attitude calls for direct action and disregard for the difficult daily work of preparing and rallying the working class. In the past, opportunists have betrayed the struggle for socialism countless times, leading the workers to a deadlock of bourgeois compromise and isolating themselves from the broad masses of working people. It was in this way that in 1914, the leaders of the Second International betrayed the interests of the workers outright by supporting their own imperialist states in the awful violence of the Great War. The opportunism of the German Social Democrats led them into the halls of bourgeois government, where they took up the repression of the 1918 revolution. It led to the most tragic consequences for the German working class. Thanks to the Social Democrats, all truly revolutionary communist forces in Germany were isolated and defeated, and a strong labor movement was put down. This played right to the strength of the forces of the far right and the eventual installment of Hitler's dictatorship. Another example of an opportunist line is the position of Nikolai Bukharin, a member of the Central Committee of the Bolshevik Party. He and the faction which he led spoke categorically against the peace of Brest-Litovsk, instead calling for a further war against Germany in the face of military and logistical unreadiness and the possibly dire consequences for Soviet power. Bukharin was even ready to come to terms with the defeat and collapse of Soviet Russia, so long as his pride didn't have to bear a shameful peace. An equally striking example of opportunism is the activity of Trotsky and his followers, which grew nearly fatal for the Soviet Union. His denial of the possibility of building socialism in one country demands for factionalism and a multi-party system in the face of a vicious class struggle, splitting apart the world communist movement and even calling for the overthrow of Stalin on the eve of a war with Nazi Germany are only a small part of Trotsky's opportunist activity. Some of the Trotskyists went so far as becoming openly anti-Soviet, collaborating with the bourgeoisie and the fascists in subsequent years, foreign representatives of this trend supported Gorbachev's perestroika and would even glorify Boris Yeltsin. Opportunism proved fatal for Chile as well. In the 1970s, the moderate and peace-loving reformism of Salvador Allende had abandoned the dictatorship of the proletariat and disarmed the working people, rendering itself powerless against the rise of the fascist power of Pinochet. Every one of them called themselves socialists, Marxists, communists, supporters of the working people. But in reality, these figures helped, directly or indirectly, the bourgeoisie in its mission to delude workers and preserve capitalism. One of the most dangerous lines of opportunism is revisionism. Revisionism is an anti-scientific re-evaluation of the positions of Marxism-Leninism, an opportunistic trend, which under the pretext of creative comprehension of new phenomena of reality, revises the fundamental provisions of Marxist theory confirmed by practice. The revision of Marxism is often disguised as its renewal, so it's absolutely necessary to be distinguished. Revision is an unreasonable rejection of theory, while the creative development of Marxism 
is the preservation of the foundations of Marxist theory and its enrichment with new knowledge. Hiding behind the language of a new approach towards Marxism, the revisionists erode its main components. A classic example of revisionism was that of the German Social Democrat, Edward Bernstein, who, at the end of the 19th century, declared the need to revise the entire theory of Marx. In his works, he replaced the class struggle and revolution with reformism, depriving the working people of a materialistic worldview. Bernstein's ideas contributed to the further disintegration of the labor movement and the unrestrained domination of capitalism in Europe. Partial revisions of Marxism, pseudo-socialist policies, and rejections of the scientific approach were a key reason for the collapse of the Soviet Union. Another significant practical example of revisionism was the leadership of the Maoist regime in China, whose petty bourgeois actions led the country to dire social and economic consequences. After a series of unsuccessful experiments, the leadership of the PRC handed over the country's economy to the mercy of foreign and national capitalists. As a result, it was Chinese Communist Party revisionists who cleared the path for the transfer of political power to the hands of the bourgeoisie, having personally nurtured it within their own party. History cannot list a single example where the revision of Marxism led the working people to success. Since its inception, Marxism has been developed as a doctrine irreconcilable with opportunism. Marx and Engels devoted their entire lives to the creation of the theory of scientific communism and have always actively fought against every opportunist current. It should be enough to recall their opposition to Proudhon's petty bourgeois socialism, LaSalle's compromises, Durang's idealism, and Bakunin's anarchist adventurism. The success of the October Revolution was prepared by Lenin's vigorous theoretical work. He laid bare the theoretical inconsistency of the socialist Narodniks, who dominated the movement and then fought lengthy battles with the Mensheviks, economists, ultralist Otsovists, and conciliatory liquidators. Lenin boldly exposed the opportunists of the Second International and fought without mercy against Trotsky's wrecking. Lenin's struggle continued after his death. In the 1920s and 1930s, the Bolshevik party, under the leadership of Stalin and his associates, actively fought the Trotskyists, the Karnites, and many other right and left opportunist deviations which arose. In many ways, it was this struggle that led to the building and strengthening of the Soviet Union, the building of the first socialist society in history. History can show us one thing, the communists did not know major defeat in either domestic or foreign policy, as long as the party was actively fighting opportunism in its ranks. Opportunism is not a concept we can relegate to the distant past. It still exists and has badly corrupted the labor movement today, permeating throughout the modern left. Unchallenged opportunism reigns supreme. The democratic socialists of America have become successfully integrated into the bourgeois political regime. They have seated themselves at the feet of the democratic party, serving as its left-wing caucus, where they can howl against the revolutionary path preaching their dogma of reformism and progressive chauvinist imperialism, while on the right wing of opportunism, figures such as AOC work along with the state to support imperialist coup attempts. Opportunist left wing merely takes the State Department's words and inverts them, distorting the class character of the foreign governments in question in order to emphasize their supposedly revolutionary character. The other factions of opportunistic pseudo-communists include the remaining vestiges of American Trotskyism, Maoism, Anarchism, etc. Ultra-left deviations stem from the same social assumptions as the right, the pressure of bourgeois and petty bourgeois elements of the most unstable proletarians. Their results are exactly the same. The disorientation of the working class, the defeat of the revolutionary movement, and the degradation of its activities to a parade of hopeless measures. Such organizations are characterized by organizational, theoretical, and practical carelessness, thoughtless action, and participation in any and all protest movements. Being theoretically omnivorous, they make the typical calls to unite all leftists. This position corrupts the labor movement and does not threaten either the existing regime or the capitalist system as a whole. Ultimately, these leftists will either slide towards conventional reformism or go into noisy actionism, rushing to support any social protest without assessing its class essence. It is necessary for modern communists to rebuff all hostile theories and practices 
and consistently fight against delusions and bourgeois ideologies. As we can see, opportunism and revisionism are not just empty labels that communists put on their opponents in order to offend them. Opportunists and revisionists are doing great harm to the labor movement. They distort the theory and practice of the class struggle, split the labor movement, and thereby ensure the victory of the capitalists and the defeat of the workers in this struggle. Even Joseph Stalin, in his work on the foundations of Leninism, pointed out that the fight against opportunist deviations is a necessary precondition for the victory of the working class over the forces of capital. This idea was previously defended by Lenin. The proletariat needs a strong and disciplined communist party, led with Marxist-Leninist theory, and communists are therefore obliged to criticize any kind of opportunism and revisionism which parasitizes the communist movement in order not to succumb to the tricks of all kinds of opportunists and revisionists. To be able to recognize and expose them in a timely manner, it is necessary to know and understand theory, study Marxism-Leninism, conduct propaganda, and realize on the basis of practice what activities of the communists today correspond to the nature of the current situation. Stay tuned 